In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me, who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me, who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me, who can stand before us when we call on that great name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Joanne Nixon. God bless you, Miriam. God bless you, Sister Joyce. God bless you, Katrina. God bless you, Sister Jan. God bless you, Dad. Good morning. God bless you, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, Mother Walker. Praise the Lord, Sister Roberts. God bless you, Mother Davis. Good morning, Sister Petaway. God bless you. Good morning, Caprice. Good morning, Marlette. God bless you, Sister Glory. God bless you, Sister Robinson Jacobs. Praise the Lord, Kathy. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Peddler. God bless you, Bishop Norwood. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Sula. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Sister Pam. God bless you, Deacon Grant. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you, Mother Foster. God bless you, Lady Moya. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Elaine. God bless you, Sister Burnett. Sister Brian, Mother Holman. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, Brother Mott. God bless you, Elder. Good morning, Brother Tony. Good morning, Pastor Morton. Good morning, Sister Taylor. God bless you, Sister Wiggins, Sister Brian. God bless you. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, Margaret. God bless you, Lady Fally. God bless you, Katina. Praise the Lord. Karen, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Felix. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Brisbane. Praise the Lord, Duchess. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Sister Hamilton. God bless you, Sister Polk. Praise the Lord. Hey, Michelle, good morning. God bless you, Elder Smith. God bless you, Sister Stokes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, good morning, everybody, and praise the Lord, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue, we continue to see, hear, and to witness the amazing blessings of God that come as a function of prayer, praying and believing God for what we know he is able to do. And I'm thankful today for life, health, and strength. I'm thankful today for what God is doing in our midst. I'm thankful today for his sustaining grace, hallelujah, taking us through what has been a most challenging experience and but nevertheless God is holding us together and I'm thanking God for his grace in my life in the lives of the members of our family and everyone that is going through anything because you know everybody may not be going through the same thing but everybody's going through something something that is challenging your faith something that is challenging your walk something that is challenging your commitment but I want to encourage each of us each of us to hold on, to be, to persevere, to walk through, to go through, and to simply trust God for what we know he is able 
to do. So as always, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat so we can add those names to the prayer list and to our prayer book. Um, believing and trusting God with you for the deliverance of you and those that you love and care about. If your prayer request is of a private nature, please feel free to inbox um, me, Reginald Davis, or inbox Refuge Temple Church. And once again, we will add those names to the prayer list and to the prayer book in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go to the word um, and we're turning to these final verses of the book of 1 Thessalonians. So we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and I want to read um, verse number 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 21 and I guess I'll read verse 22 as well all right 21 and 22 prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil and I want to focus mainly on verse 21 today and just talk to you from the thought, prove it, prove it. You know, it's interesting that the Bible is a book of faith. The Bible is a book of faith. God gives us things that we must accept at face value, that we must accept as simply his word, his promise, his utterance, his declaration. And so there is a lot of trust in the scripture, a lot of um, encouragement to trust, to have confidence in, to ap operate and to walk in faith. And it's interesting because that faith, ideally, only belongs to God. He's the only perfect. He's the only um, viable. He's the only um, clearly um, trustworthy being in the universe who has never failed. Now, I'm not saying other people are not trustworthy, but the people that you trust, even if they're trustworthy, they're human. And because they're human, they are subject and they are fallible like you. The only infallible being, the only being without flaws, the only being without error is God himself. And so he can demand of us that we trust him, cannot lie, cannot fail. And so he can say, trust me, honor me, follow my word, believe my word, because guess what? He does not fail. He does not fail. But when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with people who, like me, who, like you, are fallible. And the fallibility of people sometimes forces us to prove their legitimacy, to prove their veracity, to prove their trustworthiness. Now, I'm not talking about being overly suspicious and I'm not talking about being somebody that doesn't trust anybody, but I am saying what the scripture says, which is prove all things. Allow things to be proven. One of, one of the, the things that I find very um, ironic, I'll use that word, very ironic, is the fact that Many times we will accept strangers at face value, but we will be skeptical about people that we know. People that we've known for years, that have served us for years, that have labored with us for years. We know their character. We know their family. We know all about them. We see them. We engage with them. We can reach them by telephone. We can reach them by text. We can, we, we can, we can work with them. And we will sometimes hold them to this almost unrealistic standard of making them constantly have to prove themselves. But a stranger will show up in our midst and we will immediately give them the farm. 
somebody that we don't know, somebody that we have not had time to work with, have not time had time to labor with. But when the Bible says we should prove things, we should prove all things. We should prove all things. This was an encouragement to something that was already a characteristic of the Thessalonian church. They had this that they had this mindset. If you look in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 10, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so, whether those things were so. So, so there was a mindset of proving Searching the scripture, unpacking and understanding people based upon the word. And, and that's the proof. Now, the proof is not your personal um, set of um, um, uh, metrics or rubrics. And because some of us have these personally imposed things that are not based in scripture, not, not based in the word of God. It's just us wanting to to set people apart in our mindset because we like certain people a certain way. But when the word of God is an absolute standard, I'm going to say it again. The word of God is an absolute standard. It doesn't vary. It doesn't change. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So you can use the word of God to prove anybody. You can use the word of God to validate anybody. Either they're in the scripture or they're not. Either they are following this text or they're not. Either they are rightly dividing the word or they are not. And so you can prove them. Oh, God, the Bible, you can prove them. You can validate their veracity. You can validate their sincerity. That's why you have to watch people. And I don't mean that in an inspection kind of way, but you have to see if they are mature, if they are genuine believers, if they are genuine followers of Christ, because the Bible says the tree is known by what? The fruit it bears. The fruit of the person validates whether or not God is with them. The fruit of the person validates whether or not God is standing with them because the fruit of the spirit is what the spirit produces. And if the spirit produces, it's going to be evident. You know that a tree is an apple tree because there are apples on it. You know a pear tree is a pear tree because there are pears on it. And you know if people are godly because their life reflects the godliness that is in the word. And the scripture becomes the common standard. It doesn't change for you. It doesn't change for me. Whatever is right is right by the scripture. Whatever is wrong is wrong by the scripture. And it's not you judging or misjudging anybody. Because when you use the word as your metric, when you use the word as your standard, when you use the word as your guide to determine what is right or wrong, you're not going to fail. But when you use the opinion of people, when you use the validation of people, when you use what people think and what people surmise to be right or wrong, it's going to always be subjective. It's going to always be how I feel. It's going to always be whether or not I like you, whether or not you're my friend, whether or not you're somebody that I care about. But if the standard is the word, if I love you, I'm going to still look at the word as the metric by which I assess godliness because I love you. Because I care about you, because I want you walking in the truth, I want to make sure that I'm examining. And, and, and the first element is prove yourself. Mm, let me say that. Prove yourself. Before we go trying to validate or invalidate or sanction or, 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 or dismiss people, let's start with ourselves. Lord, am I in the word? Lord, am I living by the word? Lord, is the fruit of the spirit evident in my life? And, and, and so when you understand that, he says, prove it and then hold fast that which is good. Once you validate that the principle, the word, the lifestyle, the behavior is indeed godly, then the element is to hold fast. All right. Prove all things. 
prove all things, before I insist that you do something, before I insist that you behave a certain way, I need to prove it by the word. The Bible says, search the scriptures. He didn't say gloss over them. He said, search them, dig into them. And there is such, you know, if, if I'm going to be very honest and blunt this morning, there is such a passive ignorance about the word. There is such a passive ignorance about the word. And that's one reason why immature saints fall for virtually anything. Anybody with glitz, glamour, a moan, a yell, a scream, and a good organ, we think they're doing and preaching the word. But guess what? Some of that is just fluff. Some of that is just delivery. When you start to boil down what the preacher is saying, where is the truth? Where is the word? Where is the legitimate gospel of Jesus Christ that saves souls? Where is the word that transforms lives? Where is the word that makes us what we're supposed to be? Yeah, I, I like good delivery. I like someone that is articulate. I like someone that expresses and breaks down the word well. I love to hear what what we call good preaching, but I want to hear truth before I hear good preaching. Say that again. I want to hear proof before I hear good preaching. In the tr good preaching, there has to be truth or guess what? It's not good preaching. There's got to be truth. If, if truth is not interwoven in what the preacher is saying, what the teacher is saying, what the person is saying, guess what? It's not good preaching. It's not good teaching if the word is not validating what is being said. So he says, prove it by the word validated by the word. What does the scripture say about this? What does the scripture say about that? Oh God, I know you had a wonderful delivery style. You had PowerPoint, you had glitz and glamour, you had strobe lights, you had great lighting and great sound effects and great visual effects, but show me the truth. Show me the truth because there has to be truth for it to be good preaching. If it's for the saving of my soul, if it's for the edifying of my spiritual walk, if it's for me to grow and to enhance and to be everything I'm supposed to be, it has to be truth. So the Bible says, do what? Prove all things. And, 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 and if you have been changed, if I have been changed by the truth, then we have to prove that through our behavior, through our deeds, through our actions, through our follow through, through our obedience to the scripture. We have to prove that. All right. And, 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 and not. And let me be clear. You don't have to prove your salvation to anybody because nobody has a heaven nor a hell to put you in. So you're not proving your salvation by a person. You're proving it to yourself. You're proving it to yourself. You're not living for the for, for the validation or the invalidation of individuals. You're living to hear the Lord say what? Well done. And so I should be able to look in the word and look at my life and prove that there has been a change, prove that there has been manifestation, prove that I've been transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, prove that I have indeed been born again. I need to prove that not to anybody else, but myself. I need to prove that. I need to prove that. And then as I prove myself, as I examine myself, as I test myself, I hold on to that which is good. What God is doing in your life, what God has proven himself to be real in your life, what God is proven, what God has proven that you need to hold on to. You don't need to fade. You don't need to walk away. You don't need to give up. You need to hold fast. And if there was a time for the church to hold fast to the principles of the scripture, now is that time. We have been so inundated by man-made philosophies, man-made interpretations, man-made doctrines, man-made mindsets, man-made opinions, and people have raised their opinion to the level of gospel. But if it's not in the word, hallelujah, we're not obligated to hold fast to it. It might be a good ideal. 
It might make sense, but the only thing that lasts, the only thing that stands, the only thing that we're going to be able to hold on to is the word of the living God. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And when I have proven that this word is right, I need to hold on to it. When I have proven that this word is true, I need to hold on to it. When I have proven that this word is keeping and supporting and sustaining and giving me life, I need to hold on to the word. Saints, don't vacillate about it. It's the, it's the rock upon which your life stands, and that's the word of God. It's the rock upon which you live, and that's the word of God. And yes, heaven and earth shall pass away. But Jesus says, my word shall not pass away. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God, hallelujah, will stand forever. So prove it. Prove it. You can take the word of God, and you can validate its veracity. Because if you try the word, the word of God will work. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious, eternal God, thank you today. Thank you today for life, for health, for strength. I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for my right mind, I thank you for being able to get out of the bed and prepare myself for the day. I thank you because you continue to show mercy, Lord, to me. It is of your mercy that I'm not consumed because your compassion fails not, but it, it's there made new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, you are a faithful God. You are a true God. You are a forgiving God. You are a merciful God. And I'm grateful to you, God. Oh, I'm grateful to you for your mercy and your grace in my life. I'm thankful, God, for the forgiveness of sins, the transformation of life through the word and the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for that today, God, because I could not live without it. I could not survive without it. But Lord, you continue, oh God, to have mercy on us. And oh God, I'm so grateful for your mercy today. I'm so grateful for your love today. I'm so grateful for your everlasting covenant today. Lord, I'm thanking you for my brothers and sisters who have joined us from all over the world. God, there we're here today because we trust you. And I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for their consistency. I thank you for their steadfast approach to prayer, knowing and believing, God, that you hear us, you answer us, you sustain us. You keep us, God. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful to you for that. Lord, I'm thanking you right now for every petition that your people have before you. I'm thankful because I know that you're able. I know that you can. I know that you will. I know that you will do it, God. So I'm asking you now, oh God, to move through, oh God, this prayer line this morning. I'm asking you right now to send your anointing, oh God, over the internet now to everyone that is joined into this prayer to touch them with your presence, to touch them with your anointing, to touch them with your glory right now. Father, move upon us now in the name of Jesus. Move upon every heart. Move upon every mind. Move upon every soul that's waiting, hearing, listening. Oh God, anticipating what you will do. Thank you, God. Oh Shatama, because there's a miracle right now for somebody. Thank you, God, because there's a release for somebody that has a need, that has a situation that has a problem my God but you are the most able God who is able to strengthen and to touch and to lift in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you today oh God for every petition some are crying out for their children their spouses their grandchildren their loved ones my God but Lord we know that you know how to deliver so God break the yoke oh God of sin break the yoke of guilt break the yoke of shame break the yoke of perversion 
conversion. Break the yoke of addiction today. God, whatever is binding somebody that we love. Oh God, we speak life and peace and we speak deliverance and grace. Oh God, to their situation now. Lord, there is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing you cannot fix. There is nothing. Oh God, there is no one that you cannot save. So God, stretch out your hand right now because your arm is not too short that it cannot save. Your ear is open, my God, to our cry. And God, bring deliverance now in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for every name that is on the prayer list, every name that has been offered, every name that's in the chat, God, every name that's been shared. Lord, we're praying, my God, for answers and we're praying for deliverance. God, we're lifting up Makai today. We're praying for Janice. We're praying for the Shockness family, the Wilson family, the Leonard family, the Iverson family. We're praying for the Bright children. We're praying, oh God, for Margaret Adrini, for Bria Adrini, for Zaire Blackmore. We're praying, oh God, for Shadea, for Shakaya, for James. We're praying for the Andrini grandchildren, for the Andrini siblings, God. We're praying for Shirley Riddick. We're praying for Elder Robinson and Sister Robinson. We're praying for Kiana Robinson. We're praying for Ashaya Robinson. We're praying for Nicole Robinson, for Maya, for Malcolm, for Tiffany, for Jalen, for Bryson. We're lifting up, my God, Mother Rahema Clark. We're praying, oh God, for Kevin, for Erica, for the Sharon family, the Singleton family, the McNeil family, the Toussaint family, the Epps family, God, the Herbin family. We're praying, my God, for Alma, for John Epps, for Robert. We're praying for Sam. Oh God, we're praying for the Austin family. We're praying for Tony Guzman today, for the Whitley family, the Williams family, the Austin family. We're praying for Mary Johnson and her family. We're praying for missionary Leah, her children, and her grandchildren. We're praying for Diane Williams, her family, and all of her friends. We're praying for the Jackson family today. We're praying for Pam King. We're praying for the family, oh God, and the extended family. God, we're praying for Pastor and Lady John Hannah. We're praying for the Virginia Northern Diocese today. We're praying for the Frazier family, for Rochelle Smith, for Garland, for Ashley, for Darius. We're praying for Monty today. We're praying for the Pew family. We're praying for Tamara and Tom. We're lifting up Betty Smith and her children and her grandchildren. We're praying for the Holmes family, the Thompson family. We're praying for everybody that needs salvation. Lord, you can save to the utmost. We're praying for the Watson family, the Reeves family, the Street family. We're praying for the grandchildren and grandchildren. We're praying for families everywhere. We're praying for the brokenhearted. We're lifting up the Emmanuel family, the Miles family, the Kane family. We're praying for Daryl Spigna. We're praying for D'Angelo Shivers. We're praying for Damon. And Lee. We're praying for Elder Charles and Mother Rosa Stevens today. We're praying for Kasha. We're praying for Taloya. We're praying for Kara, for Tony, for Anissa. We're praying for Mother Rosalie Washington, the Scott family, the Brown family. God, every name that's on our prayer list today, God, we're lifting up to you because we know you know how to deliver. You know how to make whole. You know how to set free, God. You know how to bring deliverance to those that stand in need. My God, we're praying for the sick today. We're praying, oh God, for the continued healing for Miracle Destiny. We're praying for Pastor Grandy Rivas. We're praying for Beverly. We're praying for HIV patients, for Alan, for Miss Nash, for Makai. We're praying for those with heart issues, those with lung issues. We're praying for Chris Foster today, for Chesley Smith. We're praying for Deacon James Grant, oh God, in the healing of his body. We're praying for Derek Simmons today. We're praying for Almeda Brown, for Mother Elizabeth Wilson today, God, that you would touch and strengthen and heal. We're praying for Dorothy Frazier. We're praying for Terry today. We're praying for Abel in the name of Jesus. We're praying, my God, for Eddie Fields today. Lord, touch him now. We're praying for Anthony Hernandez. We're praying, oh God, for Andrew. We're praying for L.D. Sproul. Oh God, we're praying for Bishop Alfonso Brooks. Oh God, we believe and trust you for healing. We're praying for, oh God, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins. God, we're praying for Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, we're lifting up Brother Wiggins, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. We're praying, my God, for Pastor Jackson. We're praying for Pastor Carr. We're praying for Elder Tyson today, Elder Smith today. God, we know that you're a healer. God, we're lifting up Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff, God. Lord, continue your healing process in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying. Oh, hallelujah. We're praying today. Oh, God, for Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Sister Simmons today. God, we know that you can heal. We're praying. Oh, God, for healing virtue to be sent everywhere. God, we're lifting up now. Oh, God, Cynthia and 
Catherine and Duchess. God, thank you for bringing Duchess through. God, now keep carrying her. Oh, God, in that healing process, in that healing journey, and we're thanking you in advance. Oh, God, for total healing in her body now, in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying today for every sick person in a hospital, in a nursing home, everyone in an ICU ward, a COVID ward, a cancer ward, everyone going to dialysis today. We're praying for healing virtue to be dispatched. Remember Marlette today. Remember Maurice today. God, we know that you're a healer. Remember Chris today, God. Touch and heal now. We're praying for those, my God, in rehab centers. We're praying for those in nursing homes. We're praying for those that are in hospice. Lord, because it's not too late for you. And we're trusting you today for your healing virtue to be released upon everybody that's sick. Even somebody watching this morning in prayer, if they're in pain, if they're in discomfort, if they have an affliction in their body, God, I speak healing now because you are the bomb in Gilead. Oh, God, you're the great physician and there is nothing, 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 my God, too hard for you. So touch and heal today. God, we're praying today for grieving families everywhere. We're lifting up the Dickerson family. We're praying for Linda Hyman and her family. We're praying, my God, for Alma. We're praying for Deacon Arthur today. We're praying for the Prunell and Stillborn families, for the Graves and Jones family, for the Wilkins family, for the Jones family, for the Goodlaw family, for the Parker family, for the Mack family. We're lifting up Bishop and Mother Jenkins, oh God, and the Staley family today. We're praying for the Pruitt Davis family, the Stalling family, for Cleveland Chandler, for LeBrian Harris. We're praying for the Davis Harbison family. God, strengthen my sister Judy. Oh God, bless Jada now. Oh God, remember my God, Jordan and Javon. God, remember, oh God, Reggie and Geneva. Remember Eric today. Remember my sisters, my father. God, give us grace and strength in the name of Jesus. We're praying for the Taylor family, the Harper family, the Sayers family. We're lifting up Manessa Crockett today. I'm praying, oh God, for Katrina. I'm praying for Grace today. Oh God, all of these people who've lost loved ones, God, give them strength. We're praying for Loretta Sibbles. We're praying for the Moore family. We're praying for Otisha, oh God, Mickens and her family, for Clark and Shea's family. God, we're praying, my God, for Elder Charlie, oh God, Edward Charlie Jr. God, we're praying, my God, for this poor child that you would strengthen and help him now. We're praying for Gary Miller. We're praying for Patricia Freeman. We're praying for the St. Marie family. We're praying for Frankie and for Patience and for Paul Taylor. God, we're praying for the Allen Williams family that you would strengthen Trell and Ryan. We're praying, my God, for the Clarks that you would strengthen Tommy and Michelle. God, we're praying for the Smiths today. God, we're praying for every family that has lost a loved one. God, that you would give strength and grace. We're praying for the Mays, the Dunlaps. We're praying for the, oh God, we're praying today, God. Hallelujah for the Purdies, the Sneeds. We're praying, oh God, for the Banks family. We're praying for the Winninghams. God, strengthen them now in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying, oh God, for the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles. We're praying for Brenda and the Allen and McNeely family today. We're praying for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. We're praying for Monique, God, and Sean and the Gary Porter family. God, we're lifting up families everywhere. My God, that needs strength, that need grace. Oh God, in dealing with the passing of loved ones. Remember the Felix family, the Sapato the Boodrums, oh God, the Maddies, remember Cheryl and Phillips, remember Deacon Arthur today, God, everyone that needs that comfort that only you can provide, God, stretch out your hand and strengthen, oh God, every widow, every widower, strengthen, my God, every grieving child, every grieving parent, my God, in the name of Jesus, everyone grieving the loss of a loved one, God, give strength now, God, I'm praying today for the entire body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, every, my God, God, bishop and elder, every, oh God, first lady, every, hallelujah, oh God, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon, every young person in the church, every musician, singer, and psalmist, oh God, the whole body of Christ, God, that you would help us to hold fast, that you would help us to hold on to that which is good, that you would not allow us to release, oh God, the things that are nurturing and strengthening and keeping us, God, but we hold on, God, don't let us be deceived, oh God, by the falseness, oh God, and the fakeness, oh God, that seems to pervade the body of Christ, but God, help us to hold onto that which is good, help us to stand up for the truth, help us to live by the truth, help us not to compromise the truth, God, Lord, and keep us in the way, guide us and keep us, God, strengthen us now in the name of Jesus, I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers, I'm praying today for teachers.
teachers and students and school employees all over the world. I'm praying, my God, for first responders, essential workers. I'm praying for EMTs and firemen and policemen. I'm praying for everyone that works in health care, dental care, that works with the public, God, that you would cover and protect them. And Lord, I'm praying for the healing of the land, not just, oh God, from the Delta virus, not just from COVID, but Lord, heal the land from racism, heal the land from injustice, heal the land from sexism, heal the land, my God, from hatred, my God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, send your healing virtue and let the church be the example, my God. Let the church lead the nation to repentance. Let the church lead the world to repentance, God. Lord, bless us today. Make our day fruitful and productive and cause your face to shine upon us. And Lord, as we go forth, bless our going out and our coming in. And Lord, we'll give your name the glory. Hallelujah, the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on the line, come on and give God praise right now. Everybody on the line. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Let's honor him. Hallelujah. Let's bless him now. Let's bless him now. Let's bless him now. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Here's my declaration for today. Very simple. Hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth. Don't let yourself be deceived. Don't let anybody deceive you. Prove it. Prove it. Make them prove it. Hallelujah. And hold on to the truth. Hallelujah. It's the truth that gives us life. It's the truth that gives us peace. It's the truth that sustains us daily. Hallelujah. So hold on to the truth. Hallelujah. If they give you something, make them prove it by the word. If they tell you there's a revelation, make them prove it by the word. Hallelujah. And if you have the truth, saints, hold on. Hold on, hold on to the truth. Hallelujah. Don't allow anything, anybody, hallelujah, to dissuade you from the truth that is in God's word. Hallelujah. Hold on to it. Live by it and watch God bless you because of it. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says what? Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So hold on to the truth. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with me today in prayer. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Thursday is off to a wonderful start. You can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day. This prayer service is available on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and on Instagram. Hallelujah. And you can access it, you can watch it, and you can share it with somebody else if you think it will bless them. You can also access our podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify. Once again, all of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if it blesses you, please share with someone else. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. I want to thank everyone for their support of this ministry. Thank you for everyone that is seated and sown and given because your gifts have strengthened our hands to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate it. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online through our website, refugetemplenc.com. That's Refuge Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. And you can go to our donate page and make a gift. If you have Givelify, you can type in Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church to know you're in the right place and make your gift there. Or you can use our cash app. That is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign the number one refuge and make your gift there. And again, thank you for your support. But thank you most of all, my brothers and sisters, for joining me each day in prayer. And so many lives are being blessed because we are praying together. So thank you. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for praying for me. And please keep praying for me. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for our children. Keep praying for my father, my sisters, our entire family. Keep praying for Refuge Temple that God will continue to bless us. And keep praying for every church that's connected with this prayer fellowship that God would indeed bless and strengthen his body. Look, God bless you today. Have a fantastic day. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.